An armed fugitive is waking up in custody after a long search by state police. Officers arrested Joseph Rodriguez. They tried pulling him over Wednesday near Angel Fire, but the car he was in sped off. There were two women inside the vehicle with him. State police ended up finding the car out of gas and with only one of the women inside. Cops captured Rodriguez near his mother's home near Angel Fire with the other woman. Police have not confirmed whether she was a hostage. Investigators say a Taos man killed an alcalde may have been shot while trying to rape a woman. 33-year-old Lawrence Sandoval was found with a gunshot wound to his head Saturday. The woman who shot him tells authorities that Sandoval knocked on her door after following her home from a nearby gas station. She says he grabbed a knife and went after her. Now, the woman says she managed to grab a loaded gun from under her pillow and shot him. Right now, the woman is not facing any charges. New for you this morning, the man who admits he shot and killed another man in Santa Fe back in 2010 will not be going to prison for it because the Albuquerque Journal is reporting that a jury found Russell Harris here not guilty of second-degree murder yesterday. Harris admits that he shot and killed Julian Cordova outside of Cordova's apartment two years ago, but he says he did it in self-defense. The two young men accused in a couple of dangerous robberies in the northern part of the state are behind bars right now. Santa Fe County Sheriff's deputies arrested Stefan Bustamente and Saul Rodriguez last night after they say the two led them on a high-speed chase just outside of Santa Fe. Deputies say Bustamente and Rodriguez robbed the Dairy Queen here in Powake Saturday night and were involved in another robbery Wednesday in Española. That's where a man was shot in the stomach. He will survive. The two now face a number of charges, including armed robbery. A former regional manager of the Boys and Girls Club of America has been arrested for molesting a young boy in Albuquerque years ago. Michael Spencer, who now lives in Texas, is accused of sexually assaulting the eight-year-old boy who lived next to him. Now, the executive director of the Albuquerque and Rio Rancho Boys and Girls Club says that Spencer was not an employee of the local clubs and was never left alone with children. Spencer is now the CEO of the Alzheimer's Association of the Greater Dallas Area. The two former football players from Valencia High School are spending their first full day on probation today for a hazing incident. Jeremiah Carroll and Jake Sanchez were sentenced to two years probation yesterday. The two were originally charged with adult rape charges after police say the victim claimed he was sexually abused in the locker room. But Carroll and Sanchez took a plea deal and were charged as juveniles with aggravated battery. Another teen involved Curtis Baralta pleaded guilty to contributing to the delinquency of a minor. He is still waiting to be sentenced. Later today, we could find out if a repeat drunk driver will face charges in a hit and run crash where a motorcycle rider was dragged for about 50 feet with his leg trapped under his bike. Stefan Kloss has a plate and 10 screws in his leg after an SUV slammed into his motorcycle in Albuquerque last month, then took off. Witnesses gave police the plate number of the SUV, and investigators say it belongs to Gabriel Candelaria. They actually arrested him, that's this man, later that day, saying he was driving drunk. Well, he was in court this week, convicted of his fourth DWI, and Kloss is hoping Candelaria is back there again soon for the hit-and-run crash. I think this guy should do serious time, like, you know, four or five years in prison for as long as he's been at this. We checked into Gabriel Candelaria's background and discovered he's been arrested on DWI charges seven times and convicted on four of them. Police are still investigating the hit and run with Mr. Kloss. Well, students and teachers at a middle school in Albuquerque are getting ready for an emotional day today to remember a girl hit and killed as she rode her bike home from school. This afternoon, they're putting a ghost bike at Tony Hillerman Middle School to remember Haley Ratliff. She used to go to school there, then she moved to Nevada, California, which is just north of San Francisco back in August. Well, a month later, she was hit and killed by an SUV. The crash had a big effect on kids and teachers at Hillerman Middle School, and they want to remember Haley and remind everyone to drive safely on the roads. The doors to the Valley Furniture Warehouse in Albuquerque are closed for good. The owners of the longtime furniture store declared bankruptcy and closed it down. The store was nearly 40 years old. The owners say that people who already bought furniture but haven't had it delivered will still get it or they'll get their money back. All right, let's go back to talking about the weather. It's going to be a big story today and through the weekend. Meteorologist Kristen Van Dyke has been telling us all week how this weekend, Albuquerque and most of New Mexico will see the coldest weather that we have seen since last winter. And this could be extremely dangerous for folks who are trying to stay warm but just aren't careful about it. News 13's David Romero is live in downtown Albuquerque with some tips to keep you and your family safe. And David, we've already seen what can happen when people aren't careful trying to stay warm at home, right? 
That's exactly right, Matt. Matt. It's pretty unfortunate, but we've already seen at least five instances this fall where houses have burned, and that's because of heating problems or people, problems that people have had with heating those homes. Now, we don't want that to happen to you or your family, so here are some tips from firefighters. First, inspect your furnace and make sure it's safe to use during the day when people are home and awake. Now, if there's a problem, you need to call a professional. If you use a wood stove or fireplace, get your chimney inspected every year and cleaned if it's dirty. That soot can catch fire real easy. Also, you want to keep your flue open until the ashes and embers are cool and make sure fires are out before you go to sleep. We see this start a number of house fires every year. And if you're using what could be the most dangerous type of heater is a space heater, make sure it's at least three feet away from anything that can burn, including bedspreads and curtains, and make sure it automatically shuts off if, if kids bump into it. Now, some of this may seem like common sense, but it could really save your life. The Albuquerque Fire Department is always worried about the citizens firing up their heating sources for the fall winter season. So it's important that uh, every citizen gets their heating sources checked by a qualified technician on an annual basis. And another thing that homeowners should be aware of is carbon monoxide poisoning. And of course, uh, you should be using a carbon monoxide detector in the home that can sense those things. Also, if you feel lightheaded or nauseous, which are some of the symptoms that go along with it, you need to get out of the house right away, get some fresh air, and call police. Matt, back to you. I had a very important reminder this morning, David. Thank you. And one more thing, make sure you and your family have a plan to evacuate to get out of your house just in case a fire does start there.